I was beginning to stake my tomatoes a little bit more and I noticed something really interesting. The plants in the front have way more flowers throughout the entire plant than the plants in the back. And then it actually led me to a video idea and it's all about why plants tend to slow down in flower production in specific areas. The entire slowdown is because of the color red. Turns out that red from afar, as with most red from afar, are a complete turnoff when it comes to plants and specifically reproduction and flowers, which is my experience in the human world as well. But when red is nice up and close and in your face, then plants like to put on a ton of flowers and reproduce until the end of time. So the question becomes, how does the plant end up with more far red light than red light? How is this ratio even disrupted? And how do you correct it if it is? Well, it turns out that far red light is increased when you have plants that are too densely planted. I remember when I did a whole video on plant spacing and the value in making sure everything is spaced properly. And I told you, Geek Crew, that I would never in a million years overcrowd my gardens this year. Well, here we are, a garden that is very overcrowded with absolutely no flowers in it because of the overcrowding. Well, it turns out all the green is actually decreasing red light and increasing the ratio of far red light. Now this change in ratio, is that like a hang 10? No, this is like hang 10. Anyways, I'm from Saskatchewan where there is no surfing at all. There could be, the wind, the wind is there to be able to surf. The water is not. The water is not. You're like a desert. This change in ratio between far red light and red light actually triggers what we call a shade avoidance response. This, very simply put, is a fancy word for plants being told either compete or die. And that means you can cue stem elongation, legginess, excessive levels of foliage, and absolutely no flowers. When it comes to the color red and being able to see it and thrive, in it, it is truly survival of the fittest. So let's loop into the science. Plants use proteins called phytochromes to detect red and far red light. These act as photoreceptors, biological light switches, if you will. When the red light is dominant, these phytochromes stay active, and these active phytochromes signal to the plant make flowers. Remember, we're talking about ratios. So when far red light is the dominant light, the phytochromes actually turn off, which signals to the plant do not produce flowers. And this isn't just a theory. There was a review published in Plant Physiology in 2021 that looked at ornamental gardens and in vegetable polycultures. And it showed that overcrowding changed the ratio of far red light to red light, which in turn affected how many flowers were produced, again, for both ornamental flowers and for polyculture vegetables. And if you want more info on how to properly garden, but not actual application of how to properly garden, then hit that subscribe button because that is what this channel is. Listen to what I say, not what I do. Definitely not what I do. That goes for plant info, life info, you name it, folks. You name it. Okay, so the next question becomes, what is the fix? And the fix to this is going to include one of two things, particularly if you've already densely planted your entire garden. Number one is if there is visible soil, you want to put some light reflecting mulch down. This can involve straw or literally anything that is white. It doesn't have to necessarily be reflective. But if it's light in color, it's reflecting some level of light. The next one would be actually to selectively thin. And I would heavily encourage this in the event that you have no soil to be seen and just a lot of greenery. If this is the case, remove, selectively cull some of those plants and then put that light reflecting mulch down. Behind me here is a great example of a polyculture vegetable area where we have a cool amount of biodiversity, but an absolute red light nightmare. This is actually turning out to have no flowers in this area as well. Combine that with the fact that this is a shady spot, and oh my landa, we are in trouble. The fix to this is actually what I did over in these tomato beds here. Yes, you can thin out your polyculture vegetable beds, but that's not really necessary, particularly when we've got plants that are very long and tall and can be staked, etc., and so forth. So number one is you're going to stake whatever can possibly be staked. 
in the case of that garden over there, I need to get some relishing going to make those squash go upwards in hopes of allowing those lower plants to get some of that red light and less of the far red light. In the case of the tomato patch, however, I have gone through both patches and I have removed a lot of the foliage. Now, this can be a good thing or a bad thing. You should watch my video on whether or not you should actually trim your tomatoes back or not because it does change the yields you end up with. But in my case, I have to trim back the plants because the yields will be hugely negatively affected if I don't because I was an idiot and I planted too many plants together. So if you have late bloomers or you have plants that were blooming that suddenly stopped blooming or if you have blooms that are happening in very odd positions on the plant such as those tomatoes over there, well it may not be the heat, it may not be your watering style, it actually can completely come down to overcrowding of your plants and the change in the ratio between red light and far red light. Geek crew, you have to let me know in the comments down below if you listen to what I say, but don't do as I do. And if you are completely fine when it comes to spacing this year, or if you've overcrowded like I have once again, and you are having flowering issues once again, once again. So, any users, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.